I really got a hold of one verse, and uh, we'll, we'll read it here. But it's a really, I really, in, I was really encouraged by this message, by this this outline. And man, God was so good. I was like, man, I was just having a good old time. But in Acts chapter number five, we're going to read, start reading in verse number twelve, and uh, we're going to read the entire, the rest of the chapter on through. So bear with me if I call on you to read a couple of verses, please. Uh, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable, just shake your head no, and I'll skip over you. But after reading so many verses, I kind of get tongue-tied, and that's not super wonderful to hear. So, verse number 12, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. I didn't say they were in one accord. They were one, with one. Anyway, verse number 13, And of some, and of the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and the believers were the more added unto the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, Insomuch that they were that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches, that at the least um, of the, the least the sight the, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude of the um, out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all that, and all they that were with him, which is the which is the sect of the Sadducees, which were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and they put them into common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth, and said, "Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life." Look at that right there. It says in the verse number twenty, it says. The words of this life. Underline, if, you, if your person underlines your Bible without doing any damage, is underline that, this life. And then verse number 21, and when they, and, and when, they ha- they, when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and talked. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, that's the C-O-U-N-C-I-L we talked about this morning, and all of the senate of the children of Israel, and sent... Uh, to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and they found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly um, found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. <laughs> That's so cool. And in verse number 24, Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would go, this would, where this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, "Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and preaching the people and teaching the, and teaching the people." Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, "Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name?" And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Oh, if that was true. If we could fill our Jerusalem with that doctrine. If we could fill Ellet with that doctrine. If we could fill Springfield Township with that doctrine. With this doctrine of Jesus Christ. And it says here, and and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They're trying to say, hey, you know, in Matthew 27, they're crying, hey, uh, let his blood be upon us and our children. Now they don't want any part of the guilt. Now they don't want any part of the... Of their error, they don't want to. Now they don't want to suffer reward, and that's what kind of happens a lot nowadays. We don't want to suffer reward of our choosing, and you know says, we're not. We're, we're you know we don't want to be guilty of what we're guilty of. In verse twenty nine, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, "We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses." Of these things. Amen. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God had given to them that obey him. When they had heard it, they were cut to the heart, and they took counsel to slay them. There's another counsel. See that? There's a counsel with a group, you know, advice. Verse number 34. Then stood there one up in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For, be, for before these days rose up um, Thutius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, 
who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all, uh, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, then let them alone. For this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, he cannot overthrow it, lest happily he, he be found even to fight against God. And to him they agree and to him they agreed when they had called the apostles and beaten them. You can't you know can't get without a good beating. Then commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Yeah. That's Christ's name, by the way. Verse forty two, and in da and daily in the temple and in every house. They ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to talk to you, go back in verse number 20. I want to talk to you this, this passage talking about this life. The Bible talks specifically about this life. I want to give you five points in, 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 uh, in, 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 uh, in reference to this life. What is this life about? What proves this life? First of all, it's pretty awesome when you've got a bunch of religious people trying to stifle something going on because they don't like what's being heard. You know, there was a movement going around with some independent Baptists. You know, we're independent Baptists. So there's a movement going on right now. And, boy, some people don't like it. They're trying to stifle it. And you know something? If we stop and think about what Gamaliel says, if it's of God, you can't stop it. But if it's of yeah. man, it'll fall apart. Yeah. You don't need to have, you know, anti-conferences. You need to go and just leave it alone. If it's of God, it'll, it'll, if it's of God, you can't stand against it. But if it's of man, it's going to fall flat on its face. Just stand back and let it go. And if they had only taken that counsel, they listened to it to a point, but they remember what the Bible says? They beat them anyway. <laughs> they always had to take their licks in it. I want to give you five things pertaining to this life. And if we pay attention to it, if we take notes, I think it will help us understand exactly what kind of, what kind of life we live. I'm a, in, no, we're a Bible believers. And above, above anything else, any denomination or anything else, we're Bible believers. We're born again. I, you know, if, if you know the Lord is a Savior, you've been born again, you're a Bible believer. There's a lot of people today... Who are, who are running around and they're trying to stifle things that they think doesn't belong to God and they're missing everything up. But I want to show you some things first and foremost that the, the, uh, the apostles' doctrine and what the, the apostles' and believers' doctrine indicated their authority. They had authority to do these things. Go to, um, go to uh, chapter 4, verse 12. I want to show you this. Chapter 4, verse 12 of Acts. It says here that this is what Jesus is saying here, and it says in verse, actually go back in verse number 10. But um, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which, which is set at naught of, of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Yeah. Neither is there salvation in any other, yeah. for there is none at our name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Verse number 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. There is something about these men. They had been with Jesus. Quickly go over to Mark, to Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. Many already know where I'm going with this, but we're, you know, the, they were given authority by Jesus Christ to, do, to preach. They were given... Uh, authority by Jesus Christ to, to flood the world with, doc, with the doctrine of the gospel. It says in verse number 15, in, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Go to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28. <clears throat> There's a life that we live in. It's the life that God... That, they were, you know, they tried extinguishing this life, this way, this this movement that was happening around, and they're trying to stop this way. I sure am glad that God already gave us authority to do what we're doing. It's found in the Word of God. Amen. He gives every believer this authority, and it says in verse number eighteen, it says, "And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority, all might, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." And then he says in verse number nineteen, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations." baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Aren't you glad that the gospel is not just restricted to an to a, to a ethnic group, it's to all people, to Amen. all 
right. nations. It says in right. verse number 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Go to Acts chapter number 1. Go back to Acts chapter number 1 there, New Testament. So we find here, this, this, their apostles' doctrine indicated, indicated authority. And if you look at that word authority, these are all, all going to end with the same letter. It's alliterated. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's all, it, it, uh, it indicates his authority, their power, their, the authority by what they do these things. By what name do you do these things? How, whose authority do you have to preach the gospel? I remember I, was going, I went to a nursing home. No, I'm sorry, I went to the hospital. And I was up there passing out tracts. And you, know, you, know, you, you can't exactly go and preach the gospel in nursing homes. Or in the hospitals, but you can go leave tracks everywhere. And people would go to the hospital, and they would and they would leave tracks in like the gift shop. They'll leave it in the ladies' room. They'll leave it in the plant. So they're everywhere. And they found like Jehovah's Witness, Witness material. They take the Jehovah's Witness material, leave tracks. It was great fun. But um, they, the hospital chaplain called me and says, "You need to stop passing out. You need to stop leaving your literature around the hospital." I said, "Well, we're just trying to give people a little bit of hope. You know, hope of eternal life." They said, "We're a hospital. We don't give hope." I was like, well, say that again. <laughs> well, they said we want to, we want to report you to your to your archdiocese or to your to your you know governing council. And who's that? I said I'll be glad to introduce him to you. <laughs> it's Jesus Christ. I do these things by God's authority. They don't like that. But it says in Acts chapter number one verse eight, it says, "But ye shall receive power. That's authority. That's ability. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem." And in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. I'm, God says, I'm giving you authority. We have The doctrine that we preach has been given to us by authority by Jesus Christ himself. By God, through Jesus, we have the authority to preach this, to preach this doctrine. You know, you go, we go door knocking sometime, and people ask, well, what right do you have telling me I'm going, you know, what right do you tell me that my sins are taking me to hell? Well, the Bible says it right here. The authority is in the word of God. Well, what right do you have? I've got all authority. Jesus gave it to me. I've got all authority to tell us that without Jesus Christ, we're going to a devil's hell. I've got all authority to tell us this is the way we ought to go. I've got all authority to say, open the word of God and preach boldly the things of Christ. Right. Why? Because I've been given all authority to do so. I don't need some governing council. I don't need the preacher's, you know, the preacher's blessing. I've already got yeah, God's right. blessing. Right. Amen? We've got to get this off this thing where we've got to stop respecting preachers and what they say. Look... I get we're supposed to respect pastors. I get that. Please don't throw eggs at me. You know, I, 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 I appreciate the respect of pastors, but you know something above and beyond? We ought to obey God rather than that. Amen. You know, right. we answer to God. We're going to stand before God and give an account for what right. we do in our life. And it's above what a preacher says. It's what God says. And we have the authority to do these things through, because of what the Lord has given us. So this life, we have all the authority in this life to do those things. We have all the authority to go to tell someone, not going to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. We have all the authority to pray. We have all the, we have the power, we have the authority to go before God boldly and have our petitions asked. We don't have to wait. We don't have to go to a pastor or to a priest and ask him to mediate on our behalf. We don't have to ask Mary to mediate on our behalf. We go straight to, to the Lord, and, he, and we don't need a mediator. He's already right there for us. Jesus Christ the righteous. There's no mediator on this earth but Jesus Christ we can go to. We have the authority. We've already been given that authority. The scepter's been lowered to us. We can go to the throne room boldly. Yeah. Number two, the naysayers and the, op the opposition implicates the, uh, the authenticity. You know, if you get, look at the people who were against. Look at the people who were against what the apostles were doing. They're the same ones who crucified Jesus. They're the same ones who nailed Jesus to the tree. The tree. They're the same ones that went to the Roman government and said, hey, have Jesus assassinated have him killed. And I'll tell you what, it didn't matter if they were Jew, Gentile, black, white, Greek, it didn't matter. The fact is Jesus was going to die on the cross for our sins regardless. Right. He was going to die for my sins regardless. But look at the people who are the naysayers. Look at the people who are trying to shut them up. They're the very ones who wanted to take Jesus privately. Go to, go to Matthew chapter 27. I want to show you this. I believe it's Matthew 27. It might be Matthew 26 verse 7. I really don't know. It just hit me by, you know, by, uh, what's the word called? Surprise. Yeah, surprise. Thank you. Chapter 26, verse number 4. Sorry, 26, verse number 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is a feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people. These are religious people, would you not say? Sure, they're religious people. 
unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtly or by sub, subtility and kill him. They wanted to take Jesus subtly. That word subtly only appears a couple times in the Bible. The first time it's ever mentioned is in, is in Genesis chapter 3, where the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That's what the devil likes to do. He likes to take things subtly. And you mark it down, 99% of the churches out there, all the religious people out there, 99% of them are leading us straight to hell. They're not following, they're not teaching the truth of God. They're not teaching the right ways. They're trying to trip you of everything else of it. And you get some people out there telling you, hey, you can just trust the Lord. You don't have to, you know, do great, you know, do, do any, anything but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, oh, it's easy believism. Now, what do you expect from a dead person? God saves us. There's nothing else I can do to, 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 to gain eternal life. There's nothing I can do to have eternal life but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And these people are saying, oh, no, you've got to repent of all your sins. It's impossible to repent of all my sins. Amen. Well, you've got to be sorry for your sins. The Bible doesn't say to be sorry for my sins. Amen. The Bible doesn't tell me I'm supposed to do good works. The Bible says I'm supposed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Amen. it. I can't right. do anything else but that. I can only believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you've got to have, everybody's, mankind has always got to have their foot in the, in the way. They've already tried earning way to the heavens. They're always trying to get their way some other way. The Bible says, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man go in and out, he shall find pastor. He shall find right. You've got to go through Jesus and him alone. And right. so many people are trying to add it, and they're trying to add things to it. But look at, look at the direction of the church. Look at the direction of this life. And look at the naysayers, the people who are always naysaying. They're shaking their head. They're, they're, they're questioning it. They're, they're, they're snuffing their nose at it. They're mocking it. They're trying to run people off, you know, off, you know, off the you know, run people out of churches, and they're always trying to cause all kinds of issues. The naysayers speaks for itself. If, if look at the look at the list. If these people are against this way, then I'm all for this way. I mean, besides the authority that we've been given, look at the world. If the world is against Jesus, why would I want to be on the world side? I want to be on the Lord side. Look at the look at the naysayers, the opposition. It end up in, 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 it implicates the authenticity. If everybody was for it. This is just logical thing, thinking here. If everybody was for it, something's wrong with it. If the media is pushing it, something's wrong with it. Mm. If the White House is pushing it, something's wrong with it. If, if the Hollywood is pushing it, something's wrong with it. Something's wrong with it. But if Hollywood's against it, and if the world is against it, and social media is against it, and all the world is against it, something's right with it. Yeah. Something's right with it. And it's this life. And in, you know, the, the, the doctrine that they taught indicated authority. But they had power over unclean, over unclean, uh, unclean spirits. They had, they had, they were able to, you know, people getting, people who were sick were being made whole. People who were, who were lame could start walking. And this is all just shines at the signs that the apostles had that we no longer have today. But the apostles had this power, and it just showed their authority, and it just showed all the naysayers just proved its truth. It just proved its truth. John chapter eight. They come and they questioning Jesus because he just forgave a woman who was com open and who was caught in, in adultery. And it's always amazing the man was never caught; it was just the woman who was caught. And they come, they come and they, and they bring the woman to Jesus, and Jesus not only forgives her, and he says, "Hey, go and sin no more." And then they start asking questions: By what authority do these things? Who, who gave you the right to do these things? Who is your father? And Jesus says, oh, "I know who my father is. Do you know who your father is?" I love that passage. I can't get a I can't get a scripture. I can't get my outline out of it. But there he, he lays him down and says, "Hey, if you're of God, if you're of God, you'd understand these things. But you don't. And the things that you're against, if you stop and realize what you're against, you want to be against it. You say you're a child of God. He tells the Jews. He tells these, these Jewish people. If you say you're of God, if you say you're of Abraham, if you say you're of Abraham, your father, you know that you you're not of Abraham the father because Abraham believed." But you're not even of Abraham. You're, you're, you're missing the point completely. Uh, they, they, they just had no truth in them whatsoever. And the naysayers implicated the authenticity of what's going on. But number three, new followers indicated availability. Aren't you glad that salvation is not exclusive? Aren't you glad that this life that we can live, the power of God in, our, in a person's life is not limited to a certain few? It can come on whosoever will. Amen. Whoever comes to God by faith. Right. Whoever lives their life by faith. Whoever gives themselves to the Lord by faith. Anybody can follow this if they obey the Lord. They can have the power of God in their life. Amen. And they can have it, but they won't do it. 
They won't, a lot of people won't do it because they're trying to come up their own individual way. But have you ever tried to get a hold, getting a hold of something and it's an exclusive club? I sell, I, I, for a while I sold Cutco knives. And you know what Cutco knives are? Best knives in the world. I sold, you got, you know Cutco? We'll talk about it. But I sold Cutco, okay? And I was, I, I was a C, I was a FSM, I was in, New, I started in New York. When I moved to Florida, I sold you know, about forty, about thirty thousand in a year, and I was doing. I didn't. I wasn't the greatest. I was okay with it. I started really making strides, and then I was like, it was not paying the bills. I was like two thousand dollars in Cutco debt. I couldn't pay out of it. I was going to you know people who didn't want to buy me more knives, and I was wasting all my time. It was a headache, and I got out of it. I said, I'm stepping away from it. And they said, well, you can always step, you can always leave, and you can always come back. No big deal. Man, that's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. 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 They make it impossible for you to come back. Unless you go back and start harassing all your family members. And I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to start harassing people around. But so you can always leave and come back. It's so exclusive. It makes it, a, it's, it's, you can't get back into it if you try. I sure am glad that, if, hey, if I back, if I get away from the church and I'm not in church for a while and I know God starts pricking my heart, says I need to get in church and they start serving the Lord again. I need to live this life the way that God tells you and be part of this life again and live in the Lord Jesus Christ and live for him. I sure am glad I don't have to jump through hoops. Amen. I sure am glad that I can, it's available for me to do it. And it's all the, even new followers. You don't have to hop on one foot and, and have a certain look and have a certain a certain uh, agenda. Right. I and I, I can just sir, I can trust the Lord as my Savior. I can start following the Lord immediately. I don't have to be part of some certain club. I don't have to wait for some guy to give me approval to serve God. Right. I can just, I don't have to wait right. for some guy to give me approval. I can serve God where I'm at, no matter where I am. I am. When I stepped out of the pastorate, it was. I tell you what, some people treat the church like this. An independent Baptist. I was a pastor of a church in eight and a half years and up in upstate New York. I pastored a church for eight and a half years. I brought the church through, uh, you know, the Lord was able to help. You know, I, through the Lord, I was able to help a church through three splits, through a church fire, a building program, a big time scandal in the community, and I was able to help take care of the guy, the church through all those things, and give the church a good help. A church have a good reputation. After a while, man, I was done. I, I need to step away. I was I lost my joy in the ministry, and I stepped away from the pastorate. Just because I didn't have a pastor doesn't mean I was I was no longer a pastor. Right. But I went down to Florida. Right. I started working at a church, and man, that church down there was a you know here's ministry, serve, serve, serve. But then after a while, the pastor started getting jealous, started getting upset because people were coming to me with the problems. And as no matter how many times I tried deflecting to the pastor, it didn't help. It was like the pastor started getting insecure. Insecure pastors are idiots, by the way. <laughs> this is not my church. It's the Lord's church. Amen. It's the Lord's church. There's no such thing as anyways. So. When I, I, so I went to another church, and I started getting, and the pastor was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll ease you in. It's coming for about two years, and then we'll start letting you preach again. I'm like, two years? Man, no way, man. Jesus is coming. I need to be ready. I need to be, I need to be found serving him. Right. He's like, well, okay, well, you know what I'm going to I tried candidating at five different churches all around, all around the East Coast, just trying to find a church. I even, started, I even tried starting a church, and God shut that door. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was so distraught. I said, okay, Lord. I guess I'm not allowed to get back in the ministry. But you know something I learned? The ministry is not what I do. The ministry is what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor not because I was not what I do, but what I am. I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I was like, you know what? I wanted to put my brother-in-law Patrick's church down in Countryside Baptist in Port Washington, exit 65, and go, go left. Anyways, I went down there. I was like, I, I told him, I said, I just want to come to Ohio. I'll move up to Ohio. I'll be near family. I said, but listen, I just want to come be a church member. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to be. A, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be assistant pastor. I don't want to be a Sunday school teacher. I just want to be a church member. I want to go door knocking. I want to go soul winning. Amen. I want to go to nursing homes. I want to. I want to sing in the choir from aloud. And I want to. I just. I just want. I just want to. I just want to be a church member. That's all I want to do is just be a church member. People say, "Oh, you can leave the ministry." Man, ministry should not be this way. This life should not be something that's so hard to get into. Right. Amen. A person yeah. falls and falls into sin and they get themselves right with God. They get themselves right with the people. Yeah. You know what? They got to find a place of service. Yeah. Should it be the hard to, sh we get so exclusive. Why are we so exclusive? I get we're supposed to be protective and not rush people in and overthrow things. But the same time is, hey, this is the Lord's work. I can't damage the Lord's work. God's going to protect his own. Truth doesn't need defending. It needs propagating. We need to share the truth and preach the truth. Yeah. But new followers, it just shows the ind that it indicates availability. It just shows that it's okay. Go to Acts chapter number uh, Acts chapter number four. It says, "Neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is none other name given under heaven whereby ye must be saved. It doesn't say you could be saved. It doesn't say you might be saved. It says you must be saved. It's the only way. And it's, and it's current. It's, aren't you glad it's current? Jesus Christ is still current. By the way, people have been coming by, by grace through faith long before Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's always been whosoever will. From the Garden of Eden until the end of the world, it's always whosoever will. There's not 7,000 7, different Gospels. Amen. People get all things muddled up and confused. There's not 7,000 different Gospels. It's always been by grace through faith. But it says in verse number 12, whereby we must be saved. It's current. Even to this day, we must be saved by grace through faith. And he's the only way we can get to heaven. And it's still going. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and a life. No, he didn't say I'm a way. He said I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible says in John chapter 3. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Sorry, it says that in John chapter 12. No, I was right. He said, it, he said it twice, both places. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If the Son of Man is lifted up, people will come to Christ. Look, Christianity today, we've, we've lifted up social gospels. People come to church to get a handout, not to get the gospel, not to, not to get fed right. from the word of God. Right. We've, we've gotten the idea that we need to bring people to church to hear the gospel. And it's dead wrong. No one has ever, that's not what God told us to do. God did not say, go into, the, go into all the world and bring them to church. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. We've got to share the gospel right. outside of these walls. Amen. And the right. gospel, think about it. God is, so in, God is so interested in the lost people around us that he commands us to go. Right. Not wait for them to come. But to go. Right. And today we did that. Right. Amen. And today we went and do knock on doors. And we told people. And Tim was able, Tim and Tara were able to lead someone to the Lord today. Why? Because it's available. New followers are still available to come to the Lord. And be part of this life. It's not a dying breed. They're still available to come to this life. And it indicates the availability that God gives. It's for whosoever will. Come freely. Amen. Yeah. Come freely. Yeah. But this yeah. life is so powerful. This, this, this born-again life that we have, the, the doctrine that's preached indicates the authority. The naysayers in, 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 um, implicate their authenticities. The new followers that they have, they, uh, they, they indicate availability. But number four, the power and peace of God amid persecution indicates acceptability. You know, if I believed a certain way and I was, and I was persecuted... And it's, it ended there, it would be one thing. I mean, think of Jim Jones, okay? One of the biggest cult leaders there were, Baptist, and sadly to say, he, you know, Baptist by name. He went out and took a bunch of people from California and brought them down to Guyana and got them all to sell everything they have and give it to them down in Guyana, moved to Guyana to a commune. And then he went and had them all drink Kool-Aid. And then that's the end of their life. That's it. What did it prove? Charles was the guy, Manson. Charles, Charles Manson, he just died this past week. People are saying well, one of the greatest, one of the biggest cult leaders of all time. I mean, mind controlling cult. My, hey, look at the power and peace of God amidst persecution indicates acceptability. If I, if 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 I'm doing this of God, and I don't have the peace of God, and I don't have the power of God in my life, how is that showing acceptability? It's not. Go to Acts chapter number seven. This is another illustration of this life, of this life. By the way. Paul went to persecute and kill people who were followers of this way, of this life. That's what it says there. He went to go find people and persecute them and throw them into jail, the people of the way. What way? The way, the truth, and life. Jesus, this life that we're speaking of. In chapter number 7 and verse number 51, Stephen is here preaching. He's flat out witnessing, man. He's not mincing words. He's letting it loose. It says in verse 51, of Acts chapter number 7. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Which one have they have not persecuted? Which one have they not slain? And it says in verse number 1, that they, um, in verse number uh, 53, who have received the law but by disposition of angels and have not kept it. You've been given the truth and you have not kept it. You've not obeyed the word. You've killed those people who have given you the truth. And then it says in verse number 54, when they had heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, aren't you glad that when the midst of tribulation, in the midst of problems, in the midst of 
persecution, that the believers of Christ still have the power of God upon yeah. their life. They right. still have the acceptance of God upon their life. And yeah. God gives them the peace of mind. The Bible says in John chapter four, in John chapter 16, that in this life we shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yeah. We're going to go through a hard time. But aren't you glad that we have the peace of God that passes all understanding? Amen. Shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus no matter what the world throws at us, we're going to have the peace of God in our life. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that good to know? Well, how do you have that peace of God? It's because of the power of God in our life. And it comes through this life. The life that Jesus Christ gives. Galatians chapter 2, the Bible says that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by works. No, I live by repent. No, I live by faith in the Son of God Amen. who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what the Bible says. The life that we have is the resurrected life. We just sing that song. Were you there when he rose up from the tomb? I was there, but he's in my heart. I serve a risen Savior. Amen. That's the Savior I have in my life today. And the peace and the power of God in my life just shows. It just indicates that I've been accepted. Delegate. This is the right way. It is the right way. We keep on reading in verse number, uh, verse number um, 55. But, be, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, this is Stephen, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And they said, Behold, and he, and he said, I, um, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Amen. They didn't like the fact that they, that they were right. They didn't like the fact that he had the power and the presence and the acceptability of God, that his works was not in vain, that God saw his labor and rejoiced in it. The Bible says that God, that Jesus was standing up and he was going to come get him. I believe that Jesus himself was going to come down there and get Stephen and, and welcome him home. And a standing ovation showing honor for a person who gave his life for the gospel's sake, who gave his life for Jesus Christ's sake. And he stood in, in honor and recognition that, a, that is someone who had given life. The Bible says that we're supposed to rejoice when, we're, when, we face, when we face persecution. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, we're supposed to be glad and we're blessed if we suffer reproach for Christ's name. That just shows the power and acceptability of this life. You know, we're, we're supposed to be lights in the darkness. And lights in the darkness is better than lights in the daytime. When we're walking in the daytime, everybody, lights are kind of useless, you know, not really needed. But we're, we're, we're lights in a crooked and perverse nation, the Bible says. And in a perverse generation, we're supposed to shine forth as lights. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. We're supposed to be the light of the world. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Then Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Amen. We're supposed to be the light. Amen. And it shows acceptability and power. When we go through tragedy, when we go through hardship, when we go through pain, when we go through persecution, God is faithful. And the power and the power upon our life, the, not just the ability, but the power, the, the force, the boldness behind us that goes on to witness, that just shows that we've been acceptable. It just shows that we've been accepted, accepted before God. And the peace of God that God gives that passes understanding. Here Stephen prays for the very people who persecuted him. He prayed. For, that's kind of hard to do when people wrongfully do us, Brother Tim. It's kind of hard to pray for their forgiveness. That's kind of hard to do. But people of this life, Jesus forgave them. Stephen forgave them. Guess what? We forgive them. We forgive them too. That's the power of this life. Number five. The furtherance of the gospel, despite opposition, indicates the agility, the livelihood that he has. This life. Acts chapter 5, verse 34, they tried snuffing it out. They tried whooping him. They told him, hey, they censored him. They said, no more do you preach in Jesus' name. And you know what they did? They said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And they went right around preaching Jesus Christ. The world doesn't want us preaching Jesus Christ. They don't want us preaching. They never have wanted us preaching Jesus Christ. Oh, it's okay to have Jesus in the manger. We sing about, you know, what child is this? We, you turn on a radio station. Turn on a secular radio station. They're going to have Christmas carols about Jesus' first advent. We're okay with his first advent, but let me tell you something. If you don't, if you don't recognize him before he was the first advent, you won't recognize him the second advent. Yeah. You're going to have a hard time following them. You can either kneel to him as lamb or bow to him as lion. 
One of the two, if you, you recognize who he came, what he's here for. But the furtherance of the gospel, despite the opposition, indicates the, the agility. You know, I think about this in a, in a side way. You know, this, this, this fellowship of believers that, I'm, that, I, that I've come along with. I'm an independent Baptist. I have no pope. I don't take orders from anybody. Except the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. I don't take orders from any I don't take orders from anyone but the Lord. But I can say of this group of people that I'm fellowshipping with, at least fourteen churches are in this quote unquote movement or this this fellowship, plus hundreds of, of like minded believers all over the globe. You know, if, if this is if, if this life that we're in right now, guys, is not of God, then then we're gonna fall apart. He's already in the wilderness. He's already going to fall off and die. He's already in the wilderness. Hey, I don't follow anybody on earth. Amen? I'm an independent right. believer. I mean, but you figure there's about, in this, in this passage here, there's at least 9,120 people that were followers of this life, that had this life. 3,000 at Pentecost, 5,000 at Pentecost, 4,000 in you know, the next couple of days afterwards, and 120 that were in the upper room. So there's at least 9,120 people who had trusted the Lord and were part of this life. That's hardly a, it's hardly a small movement. That's hardly a small movement. But there's, you know, this, this, this fellowship that I'm in, and that, we're, that we're part of, is 14 churches. Hey, if we're wrong, man, you need to put in anti-conferences. If I'm wrong, don't worry about an anti-conference. Just let it go and see what happens. If, I'm not of, if we're not of God and if we're wrong, hey, you don't need to put in another conference about us. You don't need to, look, if we're wrong, we'll, we'll, we'll fade out and die. That's what's going to happen. If we're wrong, we'll fade out and die. If it's not of God, we're going to dissolve and fade away. And it'll just be a fad, kind of like blue, you know, you know we'll kind of fade, fade in and out, kind of like um, bell-bottom jeans. It'll go away or skinny pants. Hey, skinny pants are always in season, amen? But um, <laughs> that was a fat joke. But, um, you know, we don't, we don't need to have anti-conferences. We don't need to have, you know, people running us out of colleges. And Look, if we can't take the Word of God and if we can't be mature enough to take the Word of God and study it for ourselves, we've got to ask what this person says or this chart says or this commentary says or this reference Bible says. We've got to just take the Word of God and say this is what the Bible says. We're the people of the book. I don't need man to tell me. I don't need man's approval. We don't need man's approval. We have God's approval. But if it's of God, let it alone. You can't stand against it. But if it's of not of God, it's going to fall apart. Gamaliel sat back and said, eh, just let it alone. You know who a student of Gamaliel was? The Apostle Paul. Saul of Tarsus, he was, he was underneath Gamaliel, and he didn't take this at all. And he went about, in chapter 8, he went about and caused all kinds of havoc. The Bible says he wreaked havoc of the church. The Bible says in Philippians, you know what he did for, uh, for a hobby? You know what he did for a hobby, brother Jack? You know what he did? He persecuted the church of God. Yeah, he was good at it too. That's what he did. He's like, you know what I did for a living? I did this. You know what I love about these guys? This is what I love about Jeremy and about Danielle and about Jeff and about Tara and about Tim. You know what they do for hobbies? They go door knocking. How cool is that? Would you collect cars? No. What do you do? Do you, you know, go to sports board to sport? Sometimes I would do a sporting game, not really. What do you do? I go door knocking. What, do you, what door knock? I tell people about, about Jesus. Amen. I'm traveling, Jeff says, I'm going on the, he's on the way to Kentucky. He stops in Columbus and then in Cincinnati. What did he do? He went door knocking. He found some believers and went door knocking. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Hey, we get up, meet up. Let's go bar hopping. No, let's go soul winning. I'm, come on, seriously. Pretty How bad. cool is that? Yeah, well, it's kind of radical. Well, really? Is something more radical than people dying and going to hell? Yeah. And yeah. we have a solution for it? My brother is into, my brother was, my, my dad got into EMS um, back in, 97, 98, my mom got really sick, and he wanted, he wanted to go into to EMT and paramedic stuff. And, and he started off as EMT basic, and my, my dad went out, he went really well, he, got to he went to cardiac tech, and went to shock trauma cardiac tech, and he was going to go into paramedic, and he said he decided not to. He got his instructor's license and started teaching EMS to people. My dad is like, go down there, my, people know who my dad is. My brother, my brother Andrew, and my brother Andrew and I started going, and my brother Joseph, the three of us, went in and started with the junior members of the Bassett Rescue Squad, Volunteer Rescue Squad. Call went out, man, five of us had got in the back of the ambulance. <laughs> rescue Rangers, what we call them. Run up and down the road trying to save people's life. Going in, there, going in, everybody's got their shirt. They all have their shirt, you know, EMS Rescue Squad and saving people and all this kind of stuff. And they got, you know, the radios going on and the tone goes off and bloop, bloop, bloop. Everybody comes and runs off running for their vehicles. They run up the road and save people's life. That's not extreme. That's okay. But you're trying to save someone's physical life. But what about people who want to get together and go door knocking? 
What about people who take soul winning seriously and takes the gospel seriously? Why does that look done like extremist strange people? We're not blowing people up. We're trying to keep people from dying and going to hell. We're not right. sending them there. Right. You know? Why is it so strange? But the end time, the, the world is getting worse and worse. And then you know what? We're trying to snuff that out. Cities all across the, all across the states are, are passing no solicitation laws. Where we can't go and knock on someone's door without, without a permit. Really? I'm glad. I don't know about you, Jesse. You're like maybe having second thoughts now. I'm glad we were going door knocking on your door today. Hey, there's a church in town. Hey, there's a Lord. Here's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. More importantly than where you go to church, do you know that if you were to die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Have you made peace with God? Are you right with God? Are you sin settled? Do you have the Lord as your Savior? Well, that's kind of radical. Well, it's not your business. Really? Why is it so wrong to be radical about your soul, caring about someone's soul in eternity? Yeah. Why is it so wrong? Because the world doesn't want to believe there's a heaven. doesn't want to believe there's a hell. They want to, don't want to believe that there's a Jesus Christ. These are all going to be accountable to Jesus Christ for our life. Right. And they don't want to be part of that. Yeah, but God knows how to deliver us from, from uh, temptation. He knows how to deliver us from tribulation. He knows how to deliver us from situations. Think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were delivered from the fiery furnace. Think of Daniel and the lion. They actually were in the fiery furnace, if you think about that. They didn't get spared from the fiery furnace. They went through the fiery furnace, and God spared them through the world's pressure, through their words right. trying them. And, uh, you know, look at Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel didn't, didn't escape the den of lions. He was in the den of lions, and he came out unhurt. Why? Because the world can't touch us, but, Jesus, but we're protected by God. They can destroy our body, but they can't destroy our body and soul. Amen? Amen. Think about the Dead right. Sea. They went through the Dead Sea, and God still had a way of escape for them. Stephen was stoning. He still found dying grapes. This life has power. This life is, uh, is, has five, there's five points of this, of this life that we can look back at. And if I review quickly, real, real quickly, and as long as you take notes really good, we'll be done, all right? Number one is that the, the apostles' doctrine, their signs and wonders, the apostles' doctrine indicated the authority. Churches are popping up all over the place. This fellowship that I'm, that I, that I'm, that I'm fellowshipping with. That I'm kind of, you know, fellowship with these believers. This church is popping up everywhere. They're planning a church just about every six months. Well, why? Because it's growing. If it's of God, it will go. If it's of God, yeah. you can't stop it. Amen? This church is being planted everywhere. Hey, uh, naysayers, in, naysayers, in, uh, the, the, the opposition that against this life. It implicates our, our the authenticity. It's not a fake. It's not a fading thing. It's not a fad. It's truth. The new followers indicates its availability. Aren't you glad it's not for a select few? Aren't you glad the gospel is not yeah, for the elect? It's right. for whosoever will. I sure am glad. Number three, yeah. uh, number four, the power and peace of God that comes amid persecution indicates acceptability. Number five, the furtherance of the gospel despite the opposition. The world may do the darndest to, to stop us and may do its best to stop us and to silence us. But aren't you glad that the gospel still goes on? The Apostle Paul tossed Christians, followers of this life, into prisons and killed some of them. Uh, Agrippa killed James and was going to kill Peter with the edge of the sword and do the same thing. And the gospel still goes on. In the Middle Ages, the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of England tried stopping and silencing the, the truth of the gospel. And they fell flat every time. In the Middle East, hundreds of people are dying quiet without the media even caring. People are dying Holding to the, to the truth of the gospel, and they won't recant Christ, and the gospel still goes on. Amen. You can't stop the gospel. If you could, it's not of God. I sure am glad the gospel goes to all generations. Aren't you glad for that? The Bible says we have with all power is given unto us, and it's our responsibility to propagate this life, to tell people about this life, to teach people about this life, to lead people to this life. In this life, is a, rector, is a resurrected Jesus. Amen. You can't kill him. They already tried once. <laughs> Jesus didn't even die. They didn't kill Jesus. The Bible says he laid down his life. They can't even take Jesus. Amen? Think about it. We, we serve a resurrected Jesus. That's the life that we preach. The resurrected Lord. That's, that's his life. The power that we have, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And it's the newness of life. The power that we have, the resurrected life. Paul said it this way that I may know him and the power of his sufferings. 
me that I know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know about the power of his resurrection. Yeah. And the more we live a, a resurrected life, the more we understand this life and the power that this life has. We, as believers, get to share this life with everybody we meet. How true to you are, are you to this life? Are we living ourselves in defeat? Are we letting the world silence us and push us in the corner? Because I'm not seeing bombastic and be, you know, rude and, uh, you know, don't, don't overshadow the power of this life by our stupidity. But at the same time, guys, let's, let's be a witness. Let's not be ashamed of this witness. Let's not bow our head and pu- let's not hide ourselves in public. A couple years ago, that guy, Pastor Joseph, whatever, something over in, over in Iran. You remember what I'm talking about? Everyone was like praying for his release. You know, he's going to be, he's going to be, um, killed for his faith. And everybody's like, oh, you got to write it and you ask for people. Look, I understand. I, I understand you want, you don't want someone to die. But if, if his death for the faith, that would have spoke, that spoke more than his release. That he was willing to be a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know. What greater honor is there in this world? Being a pastor is great. But what greater honor is there than suffering for Christ? Mm-hmm. What greater honor is there than being a martyr for this life? I'm not saying we got to go strap on bombs and go crazy. That's not what this life is about. But we should arm ourselves with the word of God and go tell people about the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. It's that important. Right. And if it's of God, it'll fade away. It'll stop. It'll go away. But for, for 2,000 years, I ain't. And it won't. Amen? Right. And they better, they better get on board and hear the gospel while it's can. Because when the church is pulled right. out of here, before Amen. God's wrath is poured, it's done. There's no more chances. There's no more chances. When the church gets pulled out, that's done. Curtain call, man. Yeah. They better they better hear the word of God while we are here in this earth to do it. Yeah. Amen. Anyways, that's all I've got. Let's go ahead and pray. Let me ask you this with head bows and eyes closed. No one looking around.